wake up when the sun goes down. I wake up when the sun goes down. I wanna do some comedy. I wanna do some comedy. At a dive bar, at a dive bar, at a dive bar, at a dive bar. I can't say what I wanna say. I can't say what I wanna say. No sense. I bought comedy. I bought comedy. Dirty bag nasty comedy. Dive bar, dive bar comedy. Dirty bad nasty comedy. Dive bar, dive bar comedy. Dirty bad nasty comedy. Dive bar, dive bar comedy. Dirty bad nasty comedy. Dive bar, dive bar comedy. Hey there, welcome to Dive Bar Comedy episode 86. I'm Wild Joe. And uh, I am recording this from home. Uh, I'm able to keep up with the weekly podcasts using the material that we recorded before the coronavirus shutdown. So this is our last show that we performed on March 10th at Lotus Lounge in East Hollywood. And um, at that time, the coronavirus had... uh, spread to Italy and was becoming an issue, but people were were still out and about. So it hadn't really hit the U.S. quite yet, or at least we didn't know about it. So uh, you'll hear a few references to it. But uh, that was pretty much the last day that we went out. That's the last show we had um, under the GT's Comedy Jam uh, banner, which uh, we had four other shows that were fully booked since then that we had to cancel. So I am going to have to look into new ways of reaching our audience, new ways of reaching out to our comics who are all uh, self-quarantined, I would assume, or sheltering in place as they call it. So uh, we'll look into new technology and ways of reaching out for interviews via phone or Skype or whatever. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on in the news, a lot going on on Facebook. It can get pretty dark and depressing. So I don't want to add to that. Um, I think for us, I want to just focus on, um, the comics and, and how the comics are doing through all this. Uh, some people are still finding humor in a dark situation. Um, one of our, our favorite comics who goes by the single name of Dana has been doing great um, funny videos on Facebook about receiving Amazon packages in the age of coronavirus and that type of thing. Um, A lot of people are are sharing and uh, I'm lucky to have a great friend group on Facebook. I hope you do too Um, or whatever social media you use because it can be very isolating staying at home. Um, and especially for those who are alone, but even those who are in a family situation, you're seeing the same few people day after day, and it can get a little monotonous, to say the least. So we all miss those days of being out there, and I love hearing just the bar sounds and the ambient noise, the, um, you know, people who are talking in the background and the the glasses clinking and the the music playing and whatever else might be there. So please enjoy the show. I will stretch these episodes out as long as I possibly can, um, keeping it under an hour or so per episode. So today we have some uh, newer comics that are new to our show and, um, and some other returning regulars. So please take a listen, enjoy the interviews, enjoy the live bar show, and subscribe every week to Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. Thank you. So, all right, let's pick it up. <laughs> yeah, guys, welcome to the GT Comedy Jam. Thank you guys for having a round of applause coming out tonight. Hey, guys, we in 
favorite spot tonight, the Lotus Lounge, has been supporting us for multiple years. Please support the bar. Buy two sodas. Buy two waters. Buy two drinks. You know what I mean? If, they might have cocaine in the back. I don't know. It's just Latino guys here who like the Dodgers. That's all I'm saying. It would not. Point is, support the bar. Tip 10 to 20% if you can. Because that's what keeps us here so we can perform, expose ourselves to what not. So you guys ready for some comedy? Yeah. I said, are you ready for some comedy? Yeah. You got that right. Well, let's open it up with the lady that's the spawn of this shit, organizing shit, counseling shit, coordinating this shit like a motherfucker with nice clothes. Can you put your hands together and give me a clap, 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 clap for Miss Joanna Wild Joe Petrie. Hey, thanks for coming. We are, uh, everybody here is here for the show, except for that guy who's here every day, all the time. <laughs> Two guys. We're gonna love you guys. Uh, Lotus Lounge has the best bar patrons, I feel like. Woo, they're, they're yes, they're the most wild. Uh, we have been coming here for a few years. We really miss the uh, decorations. They redecorated and they took down the uh, prepubescent, topless Asian girl that they had here. But the OGs remember it. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of fun. It's a big deal for me to be out. Um, thank you. Yeah, a couple of years ago I got myself into a little trouble and uh, I got one of those things that like tracks, uh, it attaches to you and then when you step foot out of your property, it goes off wailing. Hold a baby. Yeah. No, every time I'm here, uh, I'm breaking a baby's heart, so. You guys better appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pathetic. No, I actually I doubled down. I wound up with two. Um, I've got a, a two-year-old daughter and now a boy who's almost one. Um, yeah. I was pregnant with the second one, and uh, I'm like, I already have a baby. <laughs> I asked my husband, do you think we could love a boy as much as we love our little girl? He says, yeah, it's exactly the same thing, except it has a dick. <laughs> but uh, no, he was wrong. I mean, it, it actually, it's not the dick that's the, the difference between a boy and a girl. It's not the dick. It's the balls. Actually, it's a mess. Have you guys ever seen a newborn baby's balls? I'm getting a lot of people shaking their head. I hope you guys are parents. For the rest of you, for the rest of you, I'm sorry I put this disgusting image in your mind, but if you want to uh, imagine a newborn baby's balls, just picture grandpa's balls. Picture your grandpa's balls. That's, uh, <laughs> they come out fully developed, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of wrinkles and creases and it's very hard to clean, let's just say that. Um, these babies take monumental shits, people. It's a problem. I, uh, I can't even use the diaper pail. They make these metal pails that are supposed to contain the smell. Nothing can contain it. I have to throw it straight outside in the outside garbage. But no bums are digging through my trash anymore. <laughs> totally solved that problem. I do get some raccoons. Oh, sick fucks. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. People say crazy things when you have a baby. They say, oh my gosh, she's so cute. I want to steal her. 
That is a felony, by the way. Uh, anyway, I don't think they can last two days with my baby. I mean, the way she cries. She wakes up crying. I'm like, come on. Can you wake up in a good mood once in a while? This baby is so into crying. I gave birth. She comes out. First time in the world. Man, crying. Instantly crying. I'm like, what is up with this? You know? Just can't stop crying. I don't know. It's hard to tell if they're sad anymore because they cry so much. Like the baseline level of crying so high. You really can't tell. But, um, no. They're cute. They're cute. I go to a party. Bring a baby to a party. It's like bringing a bag of cocaine to a party. You know? Pass it to one person. Next thing you know, it's across the room. Some guy you don't even know. Never comes back in the same condition. My daughter's got glitter all over her face and Flashing perfumes and kiss marks. It's like an end of the night stripper. <laughs> you know? Anyway. All right, you guys. This is going to be a fun show. GT's Comedy Jam. <laughs> Thank you. We miss GT. But we're all here. Celebrate, have a good time. And like Mr. C said, have some drinks. The bar doesn't let us come just to sit around and listen to our stories. But uh, I'm glad you guys all made it out past the coronavirus. Yep. <laughs> it's now living in this microphone. <laughs> all right, you guys. I'm Wild Joe. Give it up for me. Good to see. That's right, that's right. No round of applause for Miss Wild Joe Pitchy. <laughs> guys like that comedy? I do not have kids, so I thought that was fucking funny as shit. Yeah, oh my god, yo. Yeah, yo, real shit. Kids cutting teachers drink money. Real shit. Like, I, 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 my pullout game has been strong because I like martinis. That's all I'm saying. It's like, oh shit, I, I could get her pregnant, but. I'm about to go to Vegas this weekend. And, uh, I'm about to fuck up my rent, and I can't do that with a kid. You can't do that kind of shit. Kids make you better. Hey there, it's Dive Bar Comedy. We're here at Lotus Lounge. Chino Ricardi. Ricardi. Oh, yeah. That's oh, what I you say the with milk. The... <laughs> it got bloody. Ricardi. So, uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Italy. Have you? I haven't. Yeah, nobody's going now. Uh, Nobody, yeah, they because uh, they're gonna. Be, people are afraid to die. Yeah, or get really sick. It still sucks. You know. Yeah. Again, nobody wants to get sick. I don't want to get on a downer topic, but they said even if you don't die, you could have permanent lung damage. Oh. Uh, so. Well, that anyway. kind of sucks. Luckily, people are staying home. The freeway was a breeze here. Really. On the way here. Oh, everybody. People are just staying, staying home. Because I'm a bartender, wow. and my bar looked worse than, like, there's, like, four people in here right now. There, I had two guests Okay, well, there was nobody long. here. Yeah. But the people that are here, actually, two people randomly walked in, and everybody else is here for the show. With you guys. Okay, with us. But when I first walked <coughs> in, there was one guy who, like, semi-works here because he's here all the time. Yeah. I, I don't know if he works that's, here. That's how it's been at my bar. Like, I had a couple people come in, but they were, like, friends of mine who normally come and visit. Right. And, like... Oh, it was miserable. But you know what? I'm, I'd rather everybody else stay home and I get to go to work. So <laughs> if it's going to be one or the other. As long as, well, yeah. tip, no tips. No tips. Yeah, well, yeah. whatever. As long as oh, I'm well. doing something. Well, uh, More time what for were comedy. we talking about? <laughs> something about before. I said save it for the podcast. What was it? Oh, uh, the Hollywood Hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're across the street. Are you the one that kept posting that online? Like, come to my show across from the Hollywood Hotel. Like, I never even realized it was right across. Oh yeah, from the I, po Hotel. I post. Yeah, I'm just trying to give some frame of reference because right. nobody it's knows Vermont. where the Lotus Lounge Lounge is. You're right. It's also across the street. I almost wanted to put in parentheses, not the historic Hollywood Hotel. Well, there's two Hollywood hotels. There, there are two Hollywood hotels. The Hollywood so. Hotel and the historic Hollywood Hotel. I guess I don't okay. know. I just well, thought it sounded confusing. cool. If, it it sounded does cooler sound cool. if it was historic. It does sound. Isn't cool. everything Hollywood historic? Hotel. I guess if it's old. I'm historic. Uh, but if you were in Italy yeah. and you saw one of our hundred year old buildings, you would be laughing. You'd say, That's not old at all. You call you guys think a hundred year old building is old. Our buildings are a thousand, two thousand years old. That's what they say over there. Yeah. 
I'm like, well, that's cool. You have good architecture. <laughs> I guess we should have stuck with concrete. I don't no, know. No, they, they built things out of like rocks and then you would pass like a pile of rubble and yeah. they're like, oh, an old ruin. And, and people that are from there are like, what are you talking about? See, it's like the a, Italians it's just like are just hoarders. House. The Italians are just hoarders. Something gets ruined and they're like, hey, we're going to hang on to it and call it what it is. Forever. That's the beat up stuff. We're going to visit all the stuff that got beat up and not build on it because yeah, it's, it's kind of cool now to look that at. There's a pandemic. Uh, I wanted to start booking my vacations. I bought a timeshare. Worthless. Yeah. In general, even more worthless when there's a pandemic going on and I'm afraid to get on a plane. You got a timeshare in Italy? It's all over the place, so I can go wherever. Oh, yeah? I have two babies. Yeah. One of them is over two years old, so yeah. I have to pay for a ticket. But yeah. under two years old, you don't have to buy the ticket, so basically it's like a free flight. That's a deal. You plan it like two two to five months ahead of time. Yeah. You get a steal on the ticket. I was like all ready to go, but then yeah. like now this came out. I'm but like, you know I don't what? know if I want to fly. What if it's over in six months? You get tickets for six months from now. But they're like a hundred bucks. It's something I don't think it's obscene. Gonna be over. I think it, until they find the vaccine, it's just going to spread. But, yeah. you know, that's just yeah. my opinion. Because I was actually, like, looking at a year from now. Yeah. And I'm like, who knows what's going on in a year? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, who the hell knows? But also, I don't know. Um, there's only, right now, is like soci- it's like society's holding its breath. Like, nobody's doing anything, going anywhere, washing their hands. My bartender last yeah. night was wearing the latex blue gloves for, to do everything. And, and there hasn't, has there even been one case in L.A.? I'm not sure. If there have so, been some. It's been like there have been some, case. and they've been in LAX. Wow. But I mean, it's I mean, better safe than sorry. And like I said, as long as they stay home and I go to work. But there's only so long society can hold its breath. I give it a month at most that people can kind of like stop doing stuff. I wonder why Ebola didn't come to the U.S. That was a big I, deal. I don't like then it just disappeared. Like <laughs> I don't like to wonder. I feel like wondering like jinxes it or something. Like, hey, what about that one horrible thing? How come more horrible <laughs> things don't happen? You're like, ah, don't have. Let's not tempt the fates, man. We've had it good this long. Well, I don't know. Your chance of dying is still only 1%, even if you catch it. Yeah. But uh, we're all going to go sometime. I don't know, man. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't bring my gloves, but I will next time. Okay. So. Oh, all yeah. Right, I wanted to say, I was on a mic recently where the, the host decided he's not going to shake hands anymore. And I had to call attention to the fact that most of us are resting our lips on the microphone, basically shadow French kissing each other. Yeah, if you sniff deeply into that microphone, it smells like it smells nothing. Like ass. Nothing you ever want to smell. It's ass. Yeah. Anyway, but all right. As long as we avoid fist bumps, I think we'll be okay. So, uh, where can people find you on uh, social media or wherever? On social media, uh, just Gino Riccardi. I- I'm the dude with the, the gay red sweater. And all right. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Gino Riccardi. Gino Riccardi. Always Arigato. Pleasure. Pleasure. Always. Thank you. So, you guys ready for the next video? Listening to Limp Biscuit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Listening to Fred Durst. You're hearing the decision makers end result. You're like, shit, I guess everyone does things for the nookie. Uh, that's that's the main motivation. Uh, I'm just the whiniest, just grew up with the whiniest like bands with names like Stained or like Puddle of Mud. Like there's no worse kind of name. Am I the only one who was glad that the dude for Lim- Lincoln Park killed himself? It's just I'm sorry. <laughs> Just do it or stop talking about it. I'm sorry. Just don't make it my problem. All right, no. No, I, uh, I discovered, I don't mean to bring it down too much. I discovered death when I was like a little kid, right? It was like my first memory of my grandpa dying. And then like by the time I was seven years old, I did the math and I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to die too. And I cried for like a fucking day. And my mom was like, what's the matter with you? I'm like, I'm going to die. And she's like, no, you're not. I'm like, never. And she's like, Ooh, that's, uh, <laughs> you're seven, kid. Let's keep it, uh, rainbows and unicorns. Why am I? I'm gonna fucking die. I hope that. <laughs> I've been thinking about sex and death since I was seven years old. That's a tormented life, okay? That's some heavy shit. It's like, when will I have sex? It's illegal to have sex with you. It's a horrible state of affairs. 
I hope I go out like my grandma. Because by the time my grandma was done, she was just like a mean, she was like a tough ass bitch. She was just like, I'm done. Why am I still alive? Every day she'd be like, why am I still here? Do you know? I don't know. What the fuck? My kids are grown. My grandkids are, kids are grown. My grandkids are pieces of shit. But you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Why am I still here? I hope I can embrace it like that. People do try to skip out. I don't know. I had a friend of mine when I was in high school. And I, I've never been one to like acknowledge the like cry for help, you know? I'm just like, a friend of mine came to me and he's just like, hey, dude, I tried to kill myself last night. I'm like, dude, you can't get anything right. It's like, the rest of us spend the rest of our time like trying not to die. You couldn't even get that right. It's, I almost died three times yesterday. It was a fucking close call. It was scary. But yeah, my grandma was tough. The rest of my family, I think of my family like Twinkies, you know? Like, people seem to like them. They're sweet. I tried to like them when I was a kid. And I just know they're bad for everybody, you know? My little sister, she's got like a rebel spirit, but she rebels against the wrong shit, you know? She's like an anti-vaxxer. Uh, let me get political. But seriously, I'll be like, hey, you know, you can't put metal in the microwave anymore. You adult woman. And she's like, I don't go by your rules. What do you think? You're the boss of me? Put me fucking. My brother, if he had a mutant power, he would be getting kicked out of places. He's like a professional. You've never seen someone so good at getting kicked out of places. I've seen him get kicked out on his way in to places, plural. Not just once. He's right next to you, just like, yeah, man, we're going to have a good time. And then all of a sudden, he's just getting carried out. Like magic. And you're just like, all right, you guys, I guess I'll see you later. I'll meet you outside. Fun fact, one time my brother actually physically broke his ankle at a party, and I'm like, I'm sorry, dude, you used up all your free cards. I'm not going to help you on this one. You need... You're the only one who can drive a stick. I'm like, you're the only one who can call an ambulance. You better get out. Uh, my dad. I never wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to be as tough as my dad. Dude was tough as fucking nails, right? He'd go in the shower and shave without a mirror, walk out looking like he was in a knife fight. Every day. I was telling some of my friends that. They're like, yeah, but eventually you learn. You would think so, wouldn't you? He just ball up all kinds of toilet paper on his face. And I just thought that was being a man. I'm like, shit, someday I'm gonna have to go in the shower and stab my face on a daily basis. That's just part of being an adult, you know? It's crazy tough. But he was also crazy hood. Like he was like he came from like the hood in Ecuador in a third world country, you know what I mean? Just to be a yuppie in the US. <laughs> And he could never shake that hood, you know? It's like one day, he just brings a chicken home in the middle of the night. You know that thing that your parents do when they just bring a farm animal home? The loudest farm animal in existence? Owning a, ch okay, he brought a rooster, not a chicken, okay? Owning a rooster is like having a piccolo trumpet with Tourette's syndrome. It screams, that's what they do best. And how did I find out, you ask? You're four, you're five years old, you go in the middle of the night to take a piss, and every night you have to tell yourself, I don't believe in monsters. I don't believe in monsters. I'm just gonna take a piss, nothing's gonna happen. And there's some ruckus going on behind you in the bathtub. And <laughs> there's no monster behind me. There's a fucking monster behind me! An upside down paper bag with feet just losing its shit in the bathtub. Why was it in a paper bag? I wanna know. Meanwhile, this like nipping at me. I thought it wanted me, but it probably just had the same questions I had. Why am I here? Why am I in a bathtub? Why am I still in a paper bag? <laughs> Never got answers to these questions because everyone had their little quip. I don't know. I guess your dad's just stupid. I'm like, I just really want to know. Now, my dad had this entrepreneurial spirit. If you don't know what that means, it means that everything you think you believe is the best idea you've ever had. And you just couldn't. I bought you a chicken, Gina. I bought you a rooster. <laughs> it's a chicken that screams. <laughs> Yoletta. That was my mom's name. Yoletta. The kids aren't playing with the chicken. I don't understand what's happening. There's something wrong. They don't appreciate anything. That's why we can't have nice things. No. I get my teeth done in Mexico now, because that's the same as having American insurance. <laughs> it's just easier. <laughs> it's always covered, you know? You're in Mexico. So I take the bus down there because with the gas and mileage, it kind of evens out. 
And I thought it'd be like, like a plane ride on wheels, you know, just kind of a nice trip. It's the opposite of that. It's like Skid Row on wheels. And I don't know what made a bathroom in a moving vehicle sound like a good idea on paper, but it's the scariest thing you could think of while you're right next to it, low overlooking cliffs. So I go to Mexico, because I hate dentists. It's not that I hate dentists, I hate how much they cost me, you know? And sometimes your dentist is a hustler. Oh, thank you. Sometimes your dentist is a hustler. So they'll be like, you feel that sensitivity? That's a root canal. They're like, I, uh, I, you, you're, you're beating on my tooth. I feel like it's normal. They're like, no, that's unique to you. If someone beats on your tooth, you're supposed to kind of like it a little bit. You're supposed to feel kind of good. And you don't know what the fuck they're talking about, you know? So they, they, point, they point to these like shadowy shit on the x-ray. And like, you see that dark spot that looks exactly like the shadow of my finger pointing at an x-ray? Well, that's your root canal, that's $1,000. And I'm like, well, how much is that gonna cost? They're like, you can't put a price on your teeth, Gino. You know? I'm like, well, you just did, so maybe let's talk about it. And I'm like, I don't know, will I be able to afford rent? They're like, oh, you want to chew your food and pay rent at the same time. This fucking generation, you want to chew your food, you want to buy your food, you want to live somewhere. I suppose you want to date women, too. All right, guys, that's my top favorite one. That's what I'm talking about. Another round of applause for Gino Ricardi. Beep, 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 beep. Now, I don't know if y'all heard his last comment. I, I'm, a, I'm a, a bullshit engineer. In my free time, I record like 20, 30 artists in LA, right? Two, three of them are kind of sweet. We in LA. Could be some sweet motherfuckers, right? My sweet homeboys, they tell me stories about the guys that they fuck with. Every guy they fuck with has a girlfriend or a wife. <laughs> like, real shit. I'm on some new shit now, where if a dude's like, yo, I got a girlfriend, I'm like, yo, he gay as fuck. <laughs> yeah, this dude is gay. Like, yo, you got a girlfriend? You got a wife? Oh my God, this dude is gay. Like, real shit. All the gay, yo, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's an LA thing. I'm from Philly, so I'm weird. I like pills and drinks to women. Uh, but uh, yeah, if yeah, you got a girlfriend, you gay as shit. And it's still like, <laughs> And I'm just telling you, you got a wife, you're fucking a full-blown homosexual. That's all I'm saying. Hey, it's Wild Joe. I'm here with Derek Feeman. First time on our show. Yes, great to be here. You ever done a bar show before? Um, I've done a couple bar shows, yeah, but mainly in Orange County. Um, I'm in Anaheim, but I think first, second bar show in the L.A. area. So you live in Orange County? Yes, I live in Orange County, uh, right by Disneyland. I was enslaved there for a few years. So. Doing what? Or is it, is it a secret? Uh, it's kind of a secret. I worked in a private club, so I can't say exactly what happened. Private club? Yeah, yeah. In Disneyland, yeah. It's like that. Club 29 or something? Club 33, yep. Okay. Yep. Hey, added that was a close. Few, added a few numbers in, over the years, yeah. 29. I'm just, yeah. That's like an age. You, you always yeah. keep it at 29. Yeah. You don't Below go 30. Don't go up to 33. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Not 33, no. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I'm uh, trying to delay as long as possible telling my babies anything about Disney or Disneyland. Right. They're yes. now two. And Tell them when they're 18. That's the best. I'm like, maybe when they're five yeah. or seven. Or, I don't know. Yeah. They're probably getting one trip. That's it. I'm not into crowds. <laughs> yeah, it gets very crowded. It's really crowded now with uh, the Star Wars stuff going on. But Okay, so yeah. you were there a while. When's the best, as in least crowded, time of day, day of the week, or month of the year to go to Disneyland? Probably like a Wednesday morning, December when it's raining, or March, February when it's raining, at like 11 in the morning. All right. Hey, we live close enough. We could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could get the kids in the be, car at 9, and get over there at 11 in the morning. If it's raining, half the people won't show up, so the wait lines will be nothing. So, And if it's a weekday, most people like are at work or school. Miserable day yeah. in the rain. Just go on the ride, rides that go inside. The so kids will you. never want to go back. And so you've got your two yeah, birds with one yeah, stone. Saved a lot of money. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you made it out, and uh, yeah, this will be fun. I can't wait to hear your stuff. Your, Thank you. Your new stuff. Uh, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, Eleven months, about almost a year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, where how'd you end up on this show? Um, 
Geezer. Oh, Geezer. Geezer. Me and Paul Ober know Geezer, so he asked us if we wanted to be on this show. So That's nice of yeah. him. Yeah. He um, helped me out a little with uh, booking people okay. just to expand our circle. Because we end yeah. up booking the same people over and over, but we like to have new faces. It. Yeah, of course. I will always take a booking. I'm free every night. <laughs> wow. I have a morning job. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just talking. We, we changed the start time to 8 o'clock because okay. people don't want to be out past 10 p.m. on a weeknight. Yeah. Maybe on a Thursday. But we're like Maybe Mondays, on a Thursday because then you're only tired for one day in the morning. So. Exactly. Yeah. So we're starting at 8 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. This time, the flyer said 8.30. But next time, okay. it says 8. And uh, even if we start a little late, it'll at least get people here a bit right. earlier. So we're ready to start a little earlier. And then... Mm -hmm. Uh, just power through those comics and get out of here by 10. Yeah, that should be great, yeah. 8 o'clock would be a great start time. Thanks. That was my idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and the bar owner at the last place because they were, like, closing up the bar. They wanted to count their money. They're like, get out of here. Like, a couple came in, like, there were two comics to go, and they were like, no, you got to go. We're not even going to serve you. I was like, wow. Wow. Bar closes early. Anyway, all right. For people uh, checking you out online, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram at Derek Not Freeman. Okay. Yeah. All right. There it is. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So you guys ready for the next video? Yeah. Yeah. Could you guys like to do the recording? Who's next to me? Oh, I like this guy. Next brother coming up. He actually sounds like a brother who used to march with Martin Luther King back in the day because his last name is Strong. It's about letting people go. Everybody, can I, we, got a, we got a bond right now. Can we get a one, two, three, and then let's say free? So we're going to try it, right? One, two, three, free. One, two, three, free. Give me a clap, 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 clap for Derek. Free. No. Actually, I moved back in with my parents because I was killing it with my two degrees. And I did it for the free week because we real expensive now that it's legal. Um, yeah, and both my parents are disabled, so that's great. Yeah, my mom's in a wheelchair, my dad's from Detroit, so that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they still have the same garden that they had when I was 10 years old. So we used to plant a lot of things there, planting tomatoes, strawberries. But my favorite thing to plant was evidence. So that's how I got the house to myself. So. My older brother lives there also. He moved back in because he's killing it with his business degree. So. I always felt like I was older than him, though, because I did a lot of things before him. I bought a car before him, I graduated from college before him, and I got tried as an adult before him. <laughs> Killing it. I have a twin brother. Yeah. He's the accident of the family. <laughs> Parents don't like it when I say that, but nobody tries to make twins. <laughs> Dad didn't look at mom right after doing it and say, I <laughs> I have a younger brother too, but I don't really give a shit about him, so I told him not to say that. I, I smoke a lot of weed now that I'm at home, but I need to stop getting high because I was so high the other day I stopped at a stop sign outside the neighborhood waiting for it to turn green. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even in a car, so it's just. Uh, Drugs are, good. Drugs are a good drug. I mean, worked at Disneyland for four years. That was great. And when you work at Disneyland, a lot of people ask you for favors and shit. Like my friends that I hadn't heard from since high school were like, can you sign me in? My parents were like, can you sign me in? And my ex-girlfriend was like, can you pay child support? <laughs> so I quit and worked at Knott's, and nobody wants anything now. So it's, it's in the name now. My dad's like, I don't want to go there, that's too far. I'm like, you live a mile away. So I don't see my dad anymore. Yeah. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, though, was like the loudest person on the planet. Like, I had her in my phone as human alarm clock. Yeah. 
because I stopped using one when I was with her. I'd just be like, hey, can you start giving me shit at like 6.30? <laughs> Worked every night until my alarm clock died. So. <laughs> now, there was one time though that like, we were having sex and she was so loud that she woke the neighbors up. So we had to leave their house immediately. <laughs> she liked to say she was fun size, but I, I don't know. I don't think anything that small can be that fun. But, uh, girls can get away with saying fun size, but if a guy's like, I'm fun size, he's not getting away with that. Means something else, you know? Drugs can't be fun size. Like, you can't go into the dispensary and get a fun size joint and enjoy your one hit. Because drugs are the right size. They're like, the test of this shit. I had a shitty week, though, yeah. I got, I got pulled over for driving the carpool lane by myself. So I popped my trunk to show the cop that I wasn't. Yeah, apparently the other person has to be conscious and untied proof accounts. So. so my dad is useless. That's the reason I live with him. I'm ready to retire. 26, I'm just done with it. I'll just wait 40 years and start collecting. I'm two weeks into my new job and I'm ready to put in my two weeks. I hate working. I love quitting though. I love quitting. Thank you. I think everyone should quit, right? Sometimes I get a job just to put in my two weeks. It's great. You get that. You get a month to just fuck around. I was like, training for two weeks. I don't know how to do that. I'm new. You don't have to do anything. Put in your two weeks. I'm not going to do that. I'm quitting. <laughs> what are they going to do? Fire me? That's just more paperwork. Yeah. I think you're retiring to like Arizona, Wyoming. It's really cheap there. Anyone here from Wyoming? Nobody's from Wyoming. <laughs> Does anyone here know where Wyoming is? No. no. Don't lie. Don't lie. This, yeah. I don't think Wyoming should be a state, though. Like, it's a state? Exactly. Ah! It has like 500,000 people, like the least in the country. I don't think it should be a state if you have the same population as Fresno. <laughs> like, that. like, that's where they do meth. Yeah. Wyoming only has two escalators, apparently. I researched that. Like, one to go up and one to go down. I think it's their, like, theme park or something. <laughs> Wyoming has the highest gun ownership rate in the country, even though there's no one to shoot, so there's no one having guns. <laughs> I like looking at lists of like famous people from this state, and like Wyoming has like a really short one, but like there's a couple people, like such renowned celebrities like Charlie Chaplin's first wife, <laughs> James Earl Jones' second wife. That's the whole list, actually. <laughs> Wyoming's just where you get a gun and a wife. Like the Wild West. Like San Bernardino with less heroin. Yeah, I'm ready to retire. I can't wait till I'm old. I want to be like 85 years old, like shaking my hand, yelling at kids, get off my lawn. While the cops are like, put the kid down. Look yeah, forward to that shit. I just, just want to be able to like pee on something and like have someone else have to pick it up asking, why'd you pee on the dog, Grandpa? Like, yeah. I think I have a couple more. I'm going to end this with good news, though. My, my cousin's cancer-free now. So, <laughs> okay. Yay! Okay, yeah. Funerals next week, so... <laughs> Doctor said it was blood force trauma, so that's beat cancer. Thank you, I'm very good. Thank you. All right, correction on the name, because you know I'm African American, so I automatically think slavery, so I think of being free. But his name is actually Feedman, F E E M A N. Who has ever heard that name? Exactly, and that's why I said it wrong. Another round of applause for Derek B. It's like an alternate version of the word like female, but a female. 
It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Hey there, Dive Bar Comedy. We are at Lotus Lounge. I'm Wild Joe. I'm here with Carson Cash. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, your first time uh, doing this show. Is your first time doing any bar show? Actually, yes. Yes, it is. It's terrifying. It's it's great. You know, it's like, you know, something new. you grow with new things. I'm growing in front of you. I'm growing and I'm learning. Well, uh... Not nobody here yet. No. Not not one. Well, there was one person, but he's leaving. This so Mitchell. this is my friend. Oh, Mitchell. here they're coming. Yes, they're, they're all coming right in. Right as we say, no one's here. Here comes someone to prove us wrong. Yeah, so we got uh, a lot of people signing up on Eventbrite now. Oh, that's nice. What is that? Eventbrite is a site where you can buy tickets. Oh. So the way this, the way they set it up, they work with Facebook, where you okay. set up the first, you set up the event on Eventbrite. Okay. So I think people can search it that way. I'm not sure. And then uh, they create a Facebook event for you. So oh when gosh. people go to the Facebook event, they can also buy tickets right off the event page. And, uh, you know, it's wow. easier than always bringing cash to the door. We're so spoiled. Yeah. I just love technology. I don't understand it, but I love it. So, uh, <laughs> Carson, you say you're from the South? Oh, technically. Technically, yes. My brother thinks he's from more of the South than I am. He's one of those people that, like, flies Confederate flags. It's terrifying. Um, from Virginia Beach, it's like the middle it's that like must the, be in Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nor it's like the northeast and also the southeast at the same time. So like whatever you know floats your boat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. How long have you been out here? I have been out here for about a year and a half. It'll be like two years in July, and I survived by my wife. Yeah. So your wife is like supporting you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She's she's she a believes bu- in you. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank God. Well, I don't know what she's thinking. Uh, but she yeah she's a director uh, at ET. So like she's the one who makes the money. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? I've been doing stand-up um, for about uh, 10, 10 months, 9 oh, or 10 new. months. Very new. God, I'm a baby. How long has your wife been supporting you? <sighs> well, I'd like to think since I was born, you know, somewhere did, did, in her did heart. Did start before you started stand-up or after? <laughs> okay, so she started supporting me as an actor okay. before I started doing stand-up. But then I started writing, like, my own stuff a couple years ago, and I was watching people do stand-up, and I was like, I... In a misguided way, was like I could do that. <laughs> you know, the first time I did stand up afterward, I realized everybody's question is, "Weren't you nervous? Weren't oh, you scared?" Everybody's God, yeah. very hung up on the stage fright element of it, and oh. I would say most people—that's all they think about if they imagine going on stage and doing this. That's literally what people are like. Oh, I couldn't do that, and I'm like, you know, half the time I say that about myself. I, I'm terrified every single time. Horrible anxiety. Horrible. I had bands and. Uh, I have a lot of experience going on stage, but yeah, if you have to do it for like 10 years, I think, before you totally yeah. are over that nervousness. I don't know if I'll ever get over it, but you know what I do? I take a lot of magnesium. I take GABA. Hello. Fantastic all-natural supplements that just calm you. They calm you. They center you. Yeah. Yeah. It tends to work. Well, cool. Um, so, uh, all right. This has been fun. I can't yes. wait to hear your set. And what a for treat. people that are listening, uh, where can they find you like on social media? Oh, well, kind of if you're listening and you want to find me on social media, uh, if you check those boxes, you can find me at W Carson Cash. Uh, it's spelled like money and Carson the way you think it is on Twitter and on Instagram. And it would be a real treat cool. if you followed. All right. Are you guys ready for the next comedian? All right, I like this next dude. I think he might sell drugs, because his name is too hard. His name is too hard. He sound like your next little rapper. Like, I don't know why he don't put a little in front of this. So I'm going to add this shit. You guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah. Give me a round of applause for Dan Freeman. Yeah, all right, give me a clap, 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 Is that not right? Oh, no, wait, stop, stop. Reset. Okay, I want to tell you one guy thing, guys. I want you guys to be ready. I want you guys to boo me right now. I just messed his name up. Boo me! Boo me! Boo me! Boo me! Call me a son of a bitch! Piss me! I fucked his name up. I fucked his name up. So we gotta reset. Cause that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. So. Once again, do you guys enjoy Dan Freeman? Are you ready for next comedian? So we got the CC coming to the stage, and his name is Car Son Cash. Sorry about that, sir. That's okay. That's all right. 
still would be nice. I'm just patting there, that's not weird, sorry. You know what would be nice? Is if, is if you could suck your own dick. <laughs> suck your own dick. It sounds wonderful, it does. Problem being, I feel like sucking your own dick would be a lot more like sucking a dick than actually having your dick sucked. <laughs> I mean, like I'm bisexual, that still doesn't sound like a good time. How do I know I'm bisexual? The same way that you would know you're vegan, I made a choice. <laughs> Born this way, fuck face, I don't call it a lifestyle. But look, you would be, be hard pressed to find a guy who hasn't looked down at his hard dick and been like, I wonder what that's like. <laughs> And my first sexual experience, well, through rape, but then later, by choice, in the Boy Scouts, and then my, uh, my second and third Boy Scouts, they really do make you men. We do our duty for God and our country, so there you have it, proof God loves gays, or at least gay acts. It really, it could be a person-by-person -person basis with the actual individual gay people, because I know I've known some gay people that are just like the biggest dicks, you know, but I mean, you are what you eat, so. <laughs> I remember when my dad found out, he found out I was bisexual because I told him, uh, and, you know, walking in with me and Jeremy was enough of a clue, and he was just like, Carson, what does that even mean? And I was like, you're 48, like you can't take that word, break it down and use your context clues, reading rainbow, and then he was gonna send me a military school to fix me. Can you think of anything more counterproductive when you don't want your son to do gay things than sending him to a school full of horny male teenage boys? That'll fix me. Oh yeah. God, no, Dad! Don't send me there! <laughs> and then I find my future husband, fall madly in love, sell the movie rights, and live happily ever after. Thanks, Dad. Oh, dads. Dads. Does anyone else have an asshole dad? Anybody? You're at a bar. I mean, you probably do. Okay. Okay, so last week my car battery died. I'm standing out with a AAA guy in my car again in flip flops, very LA. This will come back around, I promise. And in the, he's just like in awe of me. The AAA guy is just like, wow, thank you so much for being a three year member. I just, you're a veteran. I'm not a veteran. Veterans command respect. I'm an unemployed millennial. That's what I am. And he's like, no, yeah. thank you so much for being a three year. I don't know why I'm making it sound like this. Like, you're using, I'm making it sound like a barista. Like I'm using my Drew Barrymore voice. He was Hispanic. Thank you so much for being a 3 young member. What is, what is the alternative? What, like I'm going to change a car tire myself? My father didn't love me enough to show me how to do that. Like, dads are supposed to teach you about cars, right? Like, I remember there was like this one Saturday, I was going to the garage to like, I don't know, get a hoe. And my dad was like, Carson, come over here, I'm going to teach you how to change the oil and other car stuff. And I was just like, no. <laughs> and I just walked away. And that was the end of him and me and car stuff. I feel like a good dad would have been like, no, no, you come here. You need to learn this. It could save your life. And instead, he was just like, no, nah, he can die on the side of a highway. It's fine. He's not even my favorite. I'm like, I am now. Like, it took him a while to realize he had the wrong one. <laughs> what is it? Like, hindsight's 2020. We all make mistakes, okay? We just don't all tell our children they were one. He would, he would leave me in cars. Like, he'd go into stores and leave me in cars. And I'd be like, Dad, someone's going to kidnap me. And he'd be like, Carson, literally no one wants to kidnap you, okay? And if they did, they'd bring you back in an hour because you're so annoying. <laughs> Do you know how annoying you have to be where a parent is going to think even a pedophile is just going to be like, Jesus, I can't even enjoy this kid. i got to take it back. i got to take this one back. Well, Oh, God. And did he have his hands full? Sure, yes, okay? I once ordered an alligator on the internet. That's a fact. Why? Because someone at school was like, you can order anything on the internet, and I didn't believe them. I wanted to test that theory out. I was proven wrong when an alligator showed up via UPS at my front door. What can I say? I'm the product of a divorce, okay? I feel like the reason most people get divorced is because like one or both partners <laughs> pretends to be something they're not, you know, to please the other half. For example, my mother pretended she wasn't a frigid bitch for the first 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> and then she came home from a business trip and was just like, surprise, 
she was like frozen. This is why I still refuse to watch that movie. Um, it wasn't an amicable divorce. It was, what's the opposite of amicable? It, oh, it was not amicable. Um, like last week, my dad called me, and you know, just drunk and wanted to cross some boundaries. And he was just like, Carson, I don't even know how you could spend time with her, my mother, when you told me she makes you miserable. And I was like, God, Dad, look, if this is about jealousy, don't be. You both make me equally miserable. <laughs> and yes, I choose to split my time between the two of you evenly when the opportunity presents itself. I am masochistic. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Better than my parents ever did. I'm Carson Cash. Thank you so much. That's right. Another round of applause for Carson and Cash. He was good, too. I really feel bad. Like, I don't know if you guys know, in the comedy world, messing up a guy's name is like the ultimate curse. I think you guys need to say, somebody call me a piece of shit. Hey, you piece of shit. Tell me. That's all right. That's all right. I'll pull my dick out later. We'll be okay. All right. Another round of applause for Caution Cash, motherfuckers! You goddamn right. You goddamn right. We got another C coming to the stage. So it's great talent. You guys having fun tonight? Are you guys buying drinks? Buy some drinks. Get two sodas. Get two waters. Get two orange juices, motherfucker. Something. And tip 10 to 20%. Support the business, they'll bring us back so we can come here and I can embarrass myself on stage and fuck up people's names and you can call me a piece of shit. All right. You guys ready for the next comedian? I said, motherfuckers. Are you ready for the next comedian? You got that right to be a clap, 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 clap for Casey, the baddest motherfucker, starter. I'm going to match that energy for sure. All right. Um, my, uh, my little sister just came out of the closet. She's a lesbian. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm proud of her, but I feel like I should have known. Like, I remember whenever we would try to play rock, paper, scissors, she was always too busy eating pussy. <laughs> I, uh, I apologize for the lack of eye contact. Too busy watching my career go nowhere. I, uh, I have an adopted little brother from South Africa, and uh, I like to pick on him. When I do, I like to put him in full Nelson Mandela's. So uh, it's, like it's like a regular full Nelson, but it lasts for 27 years. When I let him out, he's going to be president or something. Uh, I was performing an exorcism the other day. Gig's a gig. And, uh, I was performing an exorcism, and the person who was possessed was like, your mother sucks cocks in hell. And uh, it brought a tear to my eye. She hasn't changed a bit. Anybody else want to be cremated so their ashes can be spread at all the places they didn't make it? Yeah. It's like, oh, if she went to the comedy store. Uh, that's not in the belly room. Scatter, scatter. Yeah, some shit like that. If you had hooks for hands, you wouldn't be able to do air quotes. Because yeah. it'll look like everything you're saying is a question. You can turn one hood upside down and it'll look like you know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> no comprende? That's fine. My, uh, my, uh, my, uh, Angelou. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, my, uh, dad. Sorry, I was confused those two. My dad used to refer to his children as his dreams because eventually he gave up on us. <laughs> Ah! 
Uh, there's this cute girl in, in my building I'm about to try to talk to, but uh, I'm not very good at approaching women. But I did notice that she'll come over to my apartment to uh, ask me to kill spiders for her. And uh, I do it, because that's the only time I get to talk to her. But uh, I don't know if I can keep doing it, because spiders are expensive. <laughs> By a show of uh, It Burns When I Pee, how many, of you have been, how many of you have ever been to a glory hole, huh? Fess up! <laughs> I'm fascinated by them. I'm more interested in glory holes than black holes, because nothing escapes a black hole. Everything escapes at a glory hole. Your humanity, every episode of Mr. Rogers you watched growing up, semen, lots and lots of semen, just, just all flushed down a stranger's throat. You know? I think on your way in, you should have to surrender your kindergarten photo. And on your way out, they should hand you a photo of you men regret. And, uh, and that's just your new ID. But, uh, I bet the second biggest regret of the glory hole is not brushing your teeth, just being face to face with a wall, your thoughts and bad breath. That's like your conscience asking to speak to the manager. Uh, Unless you're like one of those folks who's got like a hook to their dick, then you just kind of stand off to the side and put your ear up to the wall like you're trying to hear what mommy and daddy are fighting about. <laughs> then you can stare off into the distance as you watch their happiness drive off a cliff. I saw a porn once where a guy had such a hook to his dick. It looks like the guy was an old timey detective and his dick was a bloodhound following a scent. Just like, what is it, boy? Is it sadness? It looked like on the weekends his dick pulled people off stage at the Apollo. Uh, fine, fine, I feel close to you guys. I've been to a glory hole. <laughs> Just once, I'll never go back. Uh, I got up early, I figured. There's probably an eager performer out there who's like, it's probably all like, early bird gets the sperm, off I go, I love my job, la 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 la. Uh, I get there. It was on the Warner Brothers lot. You guys know, it's fucking showbiz. It's Holly weird. Uh, I walk in, walk in, there's no craft services. Probably a non-union gig, whatever. Walk in, spot my hole. Looks clean. There's, look, there's, it's clean, there's no man drool. There's like a, there's like a shadow covered half of it, so it kind of looks like it's winking at me. And uh, honestly, felt a bit of a connection. So uh, I saunter on over. And I go to pop it in, and then my dick just slams into the wall. There's no hole. It's just paint. It's an illusion. I got Wiley Coyote in a glory hole. And then the Roadrunner came out and beat me taller my tits. And uh, yeah, it was disgraceful behavior by an iconic cartoon character. I don't believe it either. It definitely happened. Not in the cream pie videos, just so there's no confusion. Uh, not because they're gross, they are. Or because I expect the lady to be like, I'm a volcano, and she does her thing, but never does. Uh, I don't like them because I think it's a bad role for women. Cream pie videos are just recasting women in male roles. It's like, oh, the man came, so now let's see the lady come, the man's come. And uh, not as good as the original. Just another female character clearly written by a man. Stop giving women cum handouts. They have their own cum to cum. Okay. All right, you guys have been following me with this one. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not going to put it back in this one. Let's see what my uh, music stands. Um, I'm stupid. I wish I was dead. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's just my, that's just the constant, you know, so that's, that's my shit of costume that's going on anyways. Oh, I had to break up with my last girlfriend because I found out uh, she was both the holes in my condoms. Wow. And I was like, are you insane? Do you want your sister to get pregnant? Wow. Uh, thank you guys. Have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that made me good. Number one applause for Casey, the baddest motherfucker out here is daughter. You don't want your sister to get pregnant. There's something wrong with that boy. His, his parents is crazy. Uh, that's all I'm talking about. I like people that hate their parents. I don't know. Did anybody else parents beat him a little bit? No? 
No, it's good. Comedy, I am Wild Joe. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys out on the streets when uh, bars once again reopen and we can get back to doing our bar shows. Until then, uh, stay tuned at divebarcomedy.com for more shows from the past and check-ins with comics, see how they're doing during their self isolation period all right stay well people be safe and uh please write to us please write to us we're at gt's comedy jam on facebook dive bar comedy on instagram and twitter or you could find me wild joe comedy thanks a lot